Yoav, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Dave. Nice meeting, being here as usual. Well, I want to begin today with your giving us a basic overview of your technology. Okay. So what we do is uh, we build a machine uh, about the size of two home refrigerators. Uh, the uniqueness of this machine, and it's a really it's transformable machine, that is the only machine in the world that's using three-dimensional technology to print two materials at once, one dielectric material and one conductive, and from the other side of the machine comes out an electrical device, highly sophisticated, miniaturized, that works. So from one side you enter a digital file, from the other side comes out electrical device. Nobody can do it until today. A lot of people are trying. Give us an example of a couple applications for, say, the military. Well, it's true for military, it's true for aerospace, it's true for medical. When they need what we call high-performance electronic devices, HIPEDs, which you can use a different name, say, very sophisticated printed circuit boards, very high-end. Uh, and let's say they need a RF antenna connected together with the electrical uh, um, uh, circuit that operates the antenna and also connected to a battery that makes sure the antenna operates right. And you want to do all of it together in three dimensions, including printing the antenna, the antenna, printing the electronic device, and printing a base and a little box where the battery can get in, be connected, and everything is printed at once, other than the battery which is being added afterwards. That's a very good example. You have nearly a billion dollars in cash. You've hired two very good investment banks, including Needham. Talk to us about your acquisition strategy. Okay, since, since we actually, you're right, having that, and we have developed this over the last four or four, five months, since we started to raise money, and since we started to feel that the market and our investors are really believing in the concept and the vision we're having, we hired Needham and another uh, European bank, and we looked at two types of acquisitions, which by now, through searching, uh, I think I scanned over 85 companies, which is a huge amount, we have serious candidates. Type A is uh, large companies relatively in the traditional PCB industry, but in a very, very high end of this industry, which were still on the ground in Europe and the United States and are serving the defense community, the medical community, the aviation community, the aerospace community. It's exactly called, uh, uh, corresponding to our target market. And those companies, uh, there's about, I would say 15 of them in the United States, 15 in Europe, because the rest of all this industry went to China. Those companies are targets for type A. The reason we want to buy in Europe and the United States is we are actually buying an existing relationship with customers, distribution channels, and eventually we're going to populate all those with our technology. Type B is there's many more companies, but they're smaller. And those are companies that have very, very promising technologies some of them are aiming at the same thing we are aiming, trying to compete, but they are coming from different angles. And we see in the vision of two, three years from now that those technologies will be um, integrated into our product offering. So we prefer to buy it now rather than to risk an R&D. So we're looking at about, I would say, three or four companies like this in Israel, three or four in Europe, and uh, four or five in the United States. That's the type B. What does the revenue look like on some of these targets? The type A revenue is between 50 to 200 million dollars per company. Uh, the type B companies is a revenue between 2 million dollars to um, 50 million dollars each company. Okay, and will you use all cash or you put some equity in these deals? No, I, I would prefer not to use all cash. The, re the, the, the fact that I have cash gets me in the door very fast. These people pay attention immediately. Uh, the fact that I don't want to pay cash in some, some cases because I want people, I want the manager of the company to stay in, I want the management to be compensated and uh, based on the upside. So I want to combine cash and shares and also to get to the right price. I will add one more thing that uh, uh, people should know, I'm sure they know, the SPAC, uh, call it Tsunami, with 200 SPACs running around the market, 95% in the United States, if not 100, caused the prices in the United States to soar because those SPACs are totally not sophisticated as much as paying the right prices, especially when they, when, not when they get to the last 
leg of their career, and their career is usually two years. That's when they start to raise prices. So I'm very careful not to be uh, pulled into this ridiculous race of a rat race of paying too much. You know, it's a rat race, and even if you win, you're still staying being a rat. So I'm not going to pay an overpay. We are really carefully choosing the acquisitions, and therefore looking at Europe. There, it doesn't happen because there's no SPACs campaigns there. In a recent press release, you provided shareholders a year-end 2020 update. What were some of the most important accomplishments that you're most proud of? Well, the, the, the first and I guess I would say important accomplishment, which was so, surprised me to be, to be very frank with you, is I expected the revenue to be really low because people would not buy machines during the time when Corona is there. And Corona, by the way, is still there. Uh, they can't buy machines and it's understandable. Uh, you know, um, capital gains are, uh, are uh, limited, if not zeroed out. So I thought that the revenue will go really, really low. We ended up with revenue half of last year without selling machines almost. We sell machines in the last quarter because things in, the, in, in Pacific Rim started to kind of come up. So without selling machines in a big way, we sold a lot. That actually uh, proves very important concept in our business model. First of all, our customers are buying material, which means they're using the machine, consumables, the razor blade, the razor and the razor blade. Secondly, by now 70% of our customers upgraded their old machine into the new machine that came up end of 2019, which means they like the machines, they like the technology, they believe it, enough to pay more and to get a machine that's 21st for seven. So that's, I think, is a very important achievement and proof of concept. It's really proving that we're in the right direction. Secondly, we started nano services, which means we are now giving services to our customers, those who don't buy the machines because they need to wait until Mr. CFO will release their uh, budget, are saying, okay, guys, so at least you do for us what we would have done with your machines. And we'll pay you $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 per round of prototyping. And the, the, the inventory, sorry, the, the revenue is growing from that services. We call it nanos, nano services. But the revenue is not the point here. The point is that our customers keep in touch with us. We keep in touch with them. And after spending $50,000 or so $40,000 next year, when the corona will be over, It'll be a slingshot effect when they'll buy the machines because by then they know the technology. So that's the second achievement. Third achievement is what we described with the M&A. We still didn't announce one, but we went far away in scanning the horizon, understanding who is playing, what are the prices. A lot of work was done and a lot of uh, effort were invested. And I think we reached a, a very, very important point. There's other achievements that we uh, announced uh, lately for last year, we, uh, we have developed a relationship with customers, uh, the existing customers that end up with application, new applications being developed. And uh, we're really looking forward uh, that as we advance during this year with our material spec and are getting better closer to uh, industrial and military spec, we are going to uh, end up with, with those achievements surfing. And uh, once the corona clears the way, uh, revenue is going to start to, uh, to rocket up, up. And you've talked about some of the milestones you want to achieve in 2021 already. Are there any other milestones you want to talk about today that you hope to achieve? Uh, well, I spoke about a few of them. We hope to uh, come up to finish 2021 First of all, in the middle of the year to release the new model of our uh, Dragonfly machine. Uh, we have the name already. We have the specs. Obviously, it's, it's, it's practically in uh, alpha, close to beta sites now, in the middle of alpha site, actually. So uh, we will release the information about the new name and when the time for release, which will be mid-year. I want to release it when there's be somebody to buy it. Because again, people have to come back from Corona and start to be back in the offices. But that's the first uh, goal. Secondly, our, our achievements on, on materials are really impressive. And we want to be able to uh, reach a milestone that we can announce toward the end of the year on new materials that we're going to come up with. What is the major difference between the new system that you're developing now and the current systems? 
Okay, the current systems we have now, a system for prototyping and proof of concept, the new system that will come up at the end of the, at the beginning of 2022 is going to be still prototyping, but getting into early production, first runs of production. In a by the way manner, I can tell you that even existing machines, some of our customers, specifically in defense, are using it for production as well. The reason is certain things in production cannot be done unless it's being done by our machine. So they're using it for production, but it was not built for production, it was built for prototyping. So uh, the, the new machine will be more for early prototyping and beginning of production. Are there any new applications or new uses for this technology uh, with the advent of your new systems? Yes. Uh, I'll give you examples. We are starting to climb up to higher altitudes, which means three dimensions as three axes, right? X, Y, and Z. So we are climbing up on the Z axis. Climbing up on the Z axis means we are actually starting to build printed circuit boards that look more like printed circuit cubes. Now, in printed circuit cubes, you can actually put inside the cube while you're printing, you can put uh, components and you put components in and then you continue to print above them and you put components in and you continue to print. you end up being instead of taking a very large real estate of printed circuit board you take a much smaller space of a printed circuit cube that's a very very advanced every millimeter two millimeters we go up in altitude is an achievement and we expect to show during this year a very serious advancement on that field. To be clear for our viewers, this is the only technology in the world that can take a digital file and print with 3D a high performance electronic part. And many of these parts are multi-layered, five, six layers, correct? Well, many of them are 30, 20, 30 layers even. The machine, our machine, the way it prints each layer is a micro and a half. So even if the machine ends up printing three layers in the PCB, it will print the three layers by doing 4,000 times going over them until they get them. So for our machine being digital, the machine doesn't know if it's printing two layers or 25 layers. It prints the same way. It just separately layers according to the digital file. So it's a very, very unique technology that way. And it enables us to be very flexible on how many layers we put. It doesn't add money or cost if we print more layers. In a printed circuit board, regular one, if you have a two layers board, it's very inexpensive. Uncomplicated. If you have 40 layers board, very complicated. For our machine, it doesn't know. It can print two or 20, same price. So fascinating. I love your business model because you sell the technology itself, the system, uh, you have the inks that you sell as a recurring revenue source, and you have the maintenance contracts. Absolutely. We have uh, three, I'd say one, two, three, four sources of revenue right now. The first one is the machines sale, which of course during 2020 was lower. By the way, again, in the last quarter, the Pacific Rim bought three machines, but that's the first layer. Then above that comes the consumables. We sell like HP, we sell the ink for the machines. In our case, only us having the two types of inks that work together. So it's kind of captive. Above that, we sell the contracts, the maintenance contracts on an annual basis other than the first year, which is a warranty. So that's the third one. And then above that, we have now Nanos, which is Nano Services, which is we sell services of printing, prototyping to our customers. So it's four sources of revenue. Excellent. In summary, couple sentences. What's the essential value proposition for investors today? Okay, now you're asking me serious questions about vision. I'll take you one step further. Our machine will end up being just a node in a network of machines. This is not about a machine that makes PCBs. This is going to be like the PC, the personal computer in the beginning of the 80s was a unit on your desk. Then eventually it was part of a network. It was called local area networks. Remember, novel networks. And then it became part of a wide area network. Network, And then it became part of the internet. Today, when you look at a computer, you don't even know if it's a computer or not. This is just your gate to speak with the world of the internet. 
our machine is going to be a node in a network of digital fabrication network. It will be a neural network where the inventory will be kept digitally in the brain and will be sent down to the different fabrication center and will be printed out on the machines. But the machine is going to be a smart node in a network which has a brain. And it's going to be environmental friendly because our machine, unlike the $65 billion PCB industry, which is full of chemicals and dirt and non-reusable materials, our machine comes with two cartridges. You can have 20 of like this on the shelf with one year life, uh, shelf life, and you put the cartridge, there's no waste. Once it's finished, you take the cartridge out and you're in a clean environment. So reshoring this industry from the Far East onto the land of the United States and, and Europe, and therefore shortening the sh supply chain is also enabled by the fact that it's a, becoming a clean industry through using machine like ours. Excellent. Yoab, know, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. It's a wonderful story. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.